Hi. Hello everyone. My name is Mahmoud. I'm a software engineering manager at Microsoft. Currently leading the Microsoft Visual C++ libraries team. Our teams are responsible for Microsoft's implementation of the standard C++ library. I'm here today to talk to you about the progress we have made so far towards implementing the latest C++ standard, aka C++20. I will be talking a little bit about MSVC SCL, then go into more details talking about what have been completed so far, what we're currently working on, and what's next, of course. Also, I want to tell you about a major change we have made in the way we develop the C++ library. We have recently moved our development to open source, so I would like to talk a little bit about that as well. Microsoft's implementation of the C++ library, also sometimes known as STL, is the version of the C++ library created for Windows. Most Windows C++ applications and libraries, and even Windows itself, are built on top of MSVC STL. The STL is designed to be used with other components of the Microsoft Visual C++ toolset including the compiler's front-end and back-end. However, we also support other compilers, including but not limited to Clang and Edge. As many of you may already know, the SCL library is released as part of Visual Studio, and it also integrates really well with the Visual Studio tools, such as the VS Debugger. Also, the SCL is fully compliant with C++ standards, for example, last year we have completed the implementation of the C++17 and since then and even before that we have been implementing C++20 features. Now I'd like to use this opportunity to talk to you about the move to open source development on GitHub. Last year, specifically at the same time as CPCon 2019, we have announced our move to open source development. Moving to GitHub does not mean we would reduce or have reduced our contribution to SCL's implementation. On the contrary, we are putting in a lot more resources to support this transition, and we will continue to implement C++ standard features as we've always been doing. So why really did we choose to open source the STL? First and foremost, we wanted to get closer, really close to our customers, as well as the C++ community. With the move to open source, SCL users will no longer need to wait weeks or months to get fixes to their bugs, or find out if their favorite new features have been implemented. They will be able to track all development in real time. Even more, many will find it easier to file and track issues on GitHub, since both the issues and the code live in the same place. But that's not all. We wanted to make it even easier for us to contribute back to other open source libraries out there. For example, we are currently in the process of contributing CarConv to lib C++. There's also the aspect of code quality. With more eyes and more developers contributing to the code base, we know that MSVC SCL will become even more robust. Finally, with open, with open source license we have in place, we are welcoming code contributions from the C++-wide community, which will, and already did, have a significant positive impact on the rate of implementing C++ features. So what exactly have we open sourced on GitHub? The SCL, okay, let me bring my laser pointer. So the SCL, which is this part here, is what we have open sourced. The SCL is part of a larger set of libraries that work together to make the C and the C++ runtime. The SCL depends on the VC runtime, this box here, as well as the Windows SDK Universal CRT, sometimes known as the UCRT. 
This picture here is also available on GitHub, and you can take a look there as well. Let me talk a little bit about that, about each of the boxes here. The VC runtime, together with a static component VC, start, VC startup, are part of the MSVZ's toolset, and they ship with Visual Studio. They provide the compiler mechanisms such as global variables constructors and destructors, as well as the exception handling machinery, among other stuff. The UCRT, Universal CRT here, is part of the operating system. It provides a C library support, including functions such as printf, memory allocation, and so forth. It also serves as a shim on top of other Win32 APIs, such as those used for open, fopen, and other uh, functions in the CRT. The SCL here is made of the headers, libraries, and when built, the binaries making the C++ standard library. At this time, only the SCL is open source. However, we are hoping to open source additional libraries in the future, but we don't have any current plans yet. So what is the work we have completed so far to create a GitHub repo? Here's a quick overview. First, of course, we had, like any other company, we had to get approval to open source STL, which we've done. Once we got that, we immediately got working on cleaning our sources, organizing everything for open source. We also created CMake build scripts, moving from the internal MS build project system we had before. Then we set up build agents using Azure pipelines to ensure there are no build issues in pull requests submitted, and also as part of our CI. The latest thing we have accomplished was moving our test infrastructure to the open as well, which enable us to detect runtime issues and ensure the code quality is never degraded by PRs coming in. So what are we going to do after that? We have a roadmap. That was on github.com Microsoft SCL wiki roadmap. First, we would like to finish migrating all of our existing bugs. We would like all the SCL issues to be in one place for us and everyone else to easily track. So we want to move those bugs from our internal databases to GitHub. And we, are, uh, we have started doing that and we will continue to do that. Also, there are still some parts of the SCL that don't currently build with CMake and the repo, specifically the CLR components. We will fix that and we will, con we will continue co uh, to uh, have everything uh, implemented or actually uh, buildable by CMake. Of course, our main target has and will continue to be focusing on completing the C++ standard implementation, C++ 20 implementation. This one here. Finally, we have set a goal for ourselves to, to meet the process of merging the code from GitHub repo to Visual Studio. So that process will be faster and less error prone. Now I'd like to take a minute to talk about the license we have in our GitHub repo. The license we have chosen, chosen is Apache version two with LLVM exceptions. Some of you may already know, or may have guessed from the name of the license, that this is the same one that's used by LLVM. We have chosen the license for several reasons, including its openness. So we won't limit our ability to port code to and from other open source repos, such as lib C++, for example. However, this comes at a cost. The cost for having such an open license is that it prevents us from accepting code provided under less open licenses, such as copyleft ones. That may seem, that may somewhat limit what we can accept. Another reason for open source, for using uh, the Apache LLVM with exception for open source is that it has a specific clause that allows applications and libraries using the STL the binary ones to be distributed in binaries without any attribution. That ensured the existing customers didn't have any disruption and didn't need to change the way they ship their products. 
Here's a look at that part of the license on GitHub repo. So this one is available in our Git repo at uh, master license text, license text. So this is the last section that in that license. As it says here, embedded into our object form, which really means binaries, you may redistribute such embedded portions in such object form without complying with the conditions of section 4A, 4B, 4D of the license. That's a lot of legalese, but really section 4A, 4B, and D talk specifically about software redistribution, which basically mean enabling anyone using the STL to embed uh, or, or use the binaries created from the STL without having to comply with the attribution clause. Of course, software uh, or uh, other libraries that derive from the STL or any code that derive from the STL will still need to continue to comply with those sections. So attribution is required. So next, to track all the code contributed to the repo, we have created a change log. Here, that's github.com Microsoft SCL wiki change log. The change log outlines all the features implemented and bugs fixed and shows the corresponding VS updates where each, uh, each feature or bug fix has either shipped or if it's new code, it's going to plan to be uh, the, the VS update where it will be planned to be shipped. We don't include the features implemented prior to open sourcing GitHub in that change log. However, those can be found on docs.microsoft.com right here. So this is a nice graph. This graph shows the progress made so far in implementing C++ standards. It shows both C++ 17 and C++ 20. Also, it shows bugs and LD, LWG issues we have been uh, fixing. The highlighted line here, the so orange one, together with the right axis here, tells us the number of C++ 20 library features that have been either accepted or, and implemented. Each of the jumps here is a result of more features voted in at the various WG 21 meetings. While drops like this one or this one really mean that those have been implemented. As of today, there are 32 features remaining, representing approximately 30% of the total features voted in. C17, the green line here, was mostly done around March April timeframe uh, of uh, 2018. Except for the elementary string conversion, also known as CarConf, which has been completed in August of last year. The red line here represents all the bugs that we still have. As I mentioned earlier, not all bugs are in GitHub yet, but we are working on that and we will be, ha we will be having everything on GitHub soon. Finally, the blue lines shows the progress towards implementing or fixing the LD LWG issues in our code base. So what have we, what features have we implemented? These are the features that have been completed prior to moving to GitHub. So together here, this shows the VS update, each of the features have, uh, have been implemented in. Uh, the VS update that uh, those features have been implemented in. Okay. For example, actually all of them are C20 except the first one, C17. So, like I mentioned, elementary string conversion has been the last C17. We have started development around VS 2017, 15, or we have started releasing C20 features around VS, uh, VS 2017 uh, 15.7 update. And since then, we have been working on implementing C++ 20 features. VS 2019 update 16.5 is the first release release to contain community contributed STL features. 
These are all the features contributed to STL GitHub repo that have shipped with VS 2019 16.5. I guess that's about two dozens or so. In addition to the proposed paper, the table contains the GitHub. This is a paper here where each feature uh, that each feature implements. And here's who has contributed those features. Some of the features have been contributed by MSVC uh, team, by the MSVC team, and others by uh, uh, and others by uh, external contributors. For example, CH Part Two is Charlie. He's on our team. Superwig, Nathan, they are all not uh, not on our team directly, but have been contributing to C++. Okay. The last column here is the issue. So GH9 really means the issue number, issue number nine on the GitHub repo. Uh, by the way, these slides are going to be shared, and I'll be showing the link to where these slides are going to be shared at the end of this talk. All these are linkable. All these links are uh, clickable. So you'll be able to follow the links showing the PRs when you click on the contributor here, or the issue explaining more about what this feature implements. And these are all the features that have shipped in 16.6. .6. All of those have also been implemented in GitHub. At the time of this talk, 16.6 .6 is still in preview. So to get access to those features through Visual Studio, you will need to download the latest preview. Again, I'm going to show you links where you can download the preview if you don't already know that. Finally, we know that some features won't make it to 16.6, .6, so they, we have started accumulating those in 16.7. So these are all the SCL GitHub features that are planned to go in 16.7 when the first preview ships. Of course, 16.7 haven't even started. It will start soon, so more expected to be added to 16 in the 16.7 timeframe. So the features I've been talking about are all those that we have together with the community implemented. Okay. So what's left? Here are all the features left, around 30 plus features, okay. representing about 30% of the library. Based on the current PRs in the pipeline on GitHub and the number of contributions made so far, including by the MSVC team and everyone else, C20 features will probably be implemented or completed by early next year. That's, that's a very good guess. Hopefully, it will be done by then. Now, I'd like to highlight some of the important C20 and one C17 feature that we have implemented together with the community. In the next slides, I'll be talking about each of those. Also, I'll be demonstrating each one in code. Okay. The first one I'd like to highlight is contains for ordered and unordered associative containers. Contains for ordered and ordered associative containers is one of the features that probably should have been added long time ago. As they make writing as that contains function make writing lookup code much easier, especially for newcomers to the C++ programming language. It provides a much simpler alternative to more complicated and non-obvious code, such as the one presented here. I'll give you a minute to look at this code, and then I'll move to the next. I'll move to the demo, or the next slide actually. So this table uh, from cpreference.com which I'm sure most of you know about already, shows which containers have implemented contains the function contains in C++20. This highlighted box here. So these are all the associative and uh, ordered and unordered associative containers. List, set, multi-set, and so on. Next, let's look at a quick demo of contains.
Okay, the first demo we have is for associative containers, contains. We have here very two simple examples on how to use contains. The first one is for a set, which is an ordered, and the second one is unordered map contains demo. Here we have an array of numbers, and we are going to look uh, look for a, separate, uh, a specific key in that array. Similarly, in the unordered map, we have pairs that we are going to look into for a specific key. So, in the first one, we will be looking for 10 and 30. Of course, 30 is not there, but 10 is. Similarly, 10 and 30 is the second one, which is an ordered map. Let's look at an example. Okay, so this was our test here. 10 found, yes, 30, no, 10, 30, no. Okay, let's go back to slides. Another feature that I'd like to talk about is starts with and ends with for strings and string views. As the name says, starts with and ends with is probably self-explanatory. It looks for uh, a string and and tell, and uh, provide a boolean that says whether start with a, a string starts with a given string or another string ends with a given one. It works for both basic string and string view. Similar to contains, those are functions that makes writing C++ a lot easier. I'm not really sure if we're going to see more string helps in the future, but this is a good start, and I'm sure it would be nice to see more. Let's quickly demo it, uh, starts with and ends with. Continuing the trend of functions that simplify programming, especially for newcomer to the newcomers to the programming language, we have uh, starts with and begin with. I have two demos here, one for string and one for string view. So in both demos, we will be in both examples here, we will be looking for a string, and in some of those cases, we will find it, it starts with and, and other cases we want. For example, here, C++ 20 demo, does this start with C++? We'll see if it's true or false. It starts with Java? Probably not, so we'll see that. Similarly, as with demo, of course, demo is different from the small letter demo, is different from capital letter demo. So, Second example, we will be looking at string view. It is the same, it's almost the same example, so let's look at it here. Okay. So the C plus twenty demo start with C plus yes. Demo start with Java false and continue. We could also search for a car rather a character rather than a string. So that works as well. Okay. And the second demo has the same things work for it as well. Okay, let's go back to slides. This proposal introduced a new type, char8 underscore t. I'll just be calling car 8 t for now. I don't really know the right pronunciation, but car 8 t sounds good. The new type introduced solves a gap in the library. C11 have added UTF-8, UTF-16, and UTF-32 string literals. Also new types, car 16 t and car 32 t were added for UTF-16 and UTF-32 respectively. But no new type was added specifically for UTF-8, until now at least. So, in addition to the new CAR-8 type introduced by this proposal, the proposal has added the necessary machinery for it to work with other types and algorithms, including a new US string alias and a new file system pass constructor with char-8t. Uh, char the following demo shows how to use a new type. Let's take a look at the char8t demo here. One of the first things I want to point out, because it's not standard, is because I am going to print, we are going to print uh, UTF-8 characters outside the ASCII, that are non-ASCII, 
uh, then I would need to set the mode. I would need to first of all to print them in white car, and then I would need to set the mode for the console stood out to be UTF-16, which will allow us to print white car strings in Windows. Similarly, because I can print directly uh, ASCII characters, I will need something or UTF-8 U8 strings directly to the console. I'm going to be converting them to W strings using multi-byte white car Win32 API. And this will going to be a helper, uh, a helper function used throughout the sample code. I'm pointing those out because these are two are non-standard. And in case you want to use that code for anything other than Windows, uh, you need to replace them with something else. Okay. The first part of the sample is a general use case. Here I demonstrate the usage of algorithms such as starts with, and these are two different ways that I can pass a U8 string either directly from std U8 string alias uh, string or as conscar U8 uh, conscar 8 uh, uh, pointer here. In the first one, I'm using actually the actual characters that are passed here that are inside uh, the search string. But in the second one, they are a bit different. They don't have all the accents on the T and I here. So let's see what will happen when I search for those. Okay. Also, the other part of the example is about hash. So it tries to compare UA strings to white car strings, the hash functions for those. Let's see if they are going to be the same or different for the same strings. First of all, as expected, it was able to find the characters with accent, the strings that have the same accents as the U string, but not the ones that have no accents here. Also, as we found out, that the hash for the U8 string is different than the one for the white car string. Here, they are different. Okay. Now let's take a look quickly at path. So path here is had a few uh, changes. First of all, the U8 path has been deprecated. If you build that, you will get the warning here with the deprecation that has been added to the library. Also, another constructor to path has been added, which uses a US string here. Okay. And then let's try to run that and see if the components of the path are going to be displayed correctly or not. Yep, here we have them. So everything, some file and some accents, yep, we have it. And the file name was correctly uh, specified together with a relative path and the extension. I believe that will be very helpful, especially in Windows where we have lots of uh, paths that are not um, that are not in ASCII only. P0919 has added heterogeneous lookup to unordered associative containers. Those are the list, set, and map, as well as a multi-set and multi-map. So what does that do? It improves the lookup performance when different but compatible types are provided for the lookup. With this proposal, there is no need to create a temporary or a copy of the key object passed to the lookup functions. The new behavior is similar to the ones that are already in ordered containers. Let's take a look at the code. In the heterogeneous unordered lookup demo, we have two examples, one for unordered map and another for unordered set. set. We also have structs that are going to be used for the template arguments. I better note here about the second one. It's not strictly required uh, after a refinement to the proposal, so it can be replaced with something like std equal to. Here we have an unordered map, and 
uh, with with uh, with a pairs here, just to string and int, and we are going to look for the key in each of them. One time using the same type, which is a string. Another time using uh, a different kind, which is a different type, which is a string view. In pr uh, prior to C++ 20, that will not work. However, C++ 20, we can actually use those alias type in unordered, ma in unordered uh, heterogeneous, uh, unordered um, containers, uh, mainly because of this proposal. Let's have a demo, quick one. So here we look for apples, which is an old map. So that was a string found. Vegetable is a string view, could not be found. Our banana was a string view, and that was found with no, with, with no issues. Oranges, which is a string, it could not be, it actually was found. Okay. An order set is almost the same, so I'm not going to go, to go through that example. Okay. Karkov, or elementary string conversion. This is the only C++17 feature we will be looking at today. As you know, it's also the last feature we have implemented in C++17. Elementary string conversions add two new functions from cars and to cars in, Carcom, in the carconf header. Those functions are used to convert between strings and numbers. The rationale behind introducing those functions is, over, is to overcome the shortcomings of existing ones primarily in terms of performance. All existing functions, example sprintf and a2i and a2L take into account locale and in some cases string formatting, which result in a performance hit for most of those, especially when we don't need to do any string formatting or where locale is not needed. From cars and to cars are non throwing and locale independent and thus can provide significant performance improvements when string conversions from and to numbers is needed. Moreover, MSVC's implementation of those functions, the STL, is based on Ruse algorithm. It's much more optimized than whatever we had before for existing functions, and which have given us has given us quite a lot of performance improvement. Stefan Stoke here about Carcom during last year's CVCon has a lot more details. So if you haven't watched it, I'd encourage you to do so. Here's a demo for Karkov. Okay, so Karkov demo, or as is known in the proposal, elementary string conversion. So here we are going to treat two functions, two cars, and from cars. First one, it basically convert from a number, a numeric value, into a string. Two cars requires that you provide uh, the size of the string through the first and last. Yeah. And uh, it's going to convert it based on the input. So sometimes you can provide something like the base, for example. By default, we are base 10. However, we can do something like provide base 16 for hex. Okay, or base two for binary. Of course, it can also also do uh, floating point numbers, and you can even specify different notation, for example, scientific notation for your output, as well as the precision used for that scientific notation. There are various options, so I'm going to run it now. No surprises here. First one is an int value, hex, or regular base 10 value, hex, binary, 
you could have specified, of course, some uh, uh, precision for that uh, floating point number, but we didn't, so it uses a default. And finally, the scientific one was one, two, three, four, five, six precision. Okay. So AC, there's the error code. In all those cases, we couldn't find any errors, so it just returns zero. From cars, as you expect, it's just the opposite. For simplicity, we will be using the, the, the input array to convert from string to uh, a numeric value. And we're going to, in each of those cases, we're going to print that numeric value. We're also going to print the result, similar to the two cars demo, and we'll see. Um, see how that will work. Okay. It's, it's worth noting that uh, at the end I'm adding an input which is not valid and val cannot be translated into, a num into any numbers. So we're expecting it to be uh, to at least output something that says this is not valid. Okay. Okay. So from cars. So okay, 2020, 3.14. 12, 120,000 to 12 each part four. It printed the hex, the, the decimal representation of that hex value. Yeah, actually, this one. Similarly, it printed the decimal representation of that binary value. And finally, okay, the last one is e3, which is equal to e inval, which is an invalid uh, input. Let's go back to slides. So starting with update 16.5, Visual Studio has started including community contributed code from GitHub. This feature has been contributed by Superwig. The link above is for support request for that contribution. Thank you, Superwig. The new arrays and erase functions are part of the library fundamentals TS. Remove and remove if have existed in the SCL for a very long time. And they certainly can help with erasing elements of the container. However, as highlighted by the paper, the correct pattern for calling remove and remove if, that pattern is not always followed correctly. Erase and erase if help erase those common mistakes. The proposal contains an in-depth explanation for why that happens. So I'm going to leave to you as an exercise to read more why arrays is sometimes a better option. Here's a demo of the new functions. In this demo, I'm going to show the new functions studio arrays and studio arrays if. We have one example for each. You also have a couple of helper functions to print the types that are going to make use of arrays and a few helper functions to be used with arrays if is vowel, is odd, is first odd, is really for a pair. So basically comparing or checking if the first uh, element in that pair is odd or not. First one is arrays. You can erase a character inside a string, or you can erase uh, elements inside a vector or inside a list, among other things. Okay. First one, we remove U from the string Visual Studio. One thing worth, uh, worth noting is the Studio Experimental functions of the same name have been deprecated. So if you try to uncomment this and compile, compile it, it will give you the warning that you see here. Okay. The second demo or the second example, we are going to use raise if, and we similar to the first one, we are going to print the list before and after erasing uh, the value given. Erase if takes a container and a function or a struct with a function that turns bool 
for a true for it turns a bool true if you should be erasing it or false otherwise so for example in this we want to raise odd ones so one three five and seven and so on should be erased here the function will erase only the uh, the first odd so if the first member of the, of the first element is a pair and this map is odd then it's going to be erased so 1 10 330 550 and so on then all the map is just the same let's take a look, quick look at the demo okay. so in each of these you can see before erasing after erasing so first one this has been the easiest so i uh, has been sorry uh, u has been erased visual studio so now this house to studio nice name and the number of elements have been decremented appropriately accordingly in each of the examples here it has removed all the vowels of course uh, erase if it is a much more versatile versatile uh, tool and can be used in a number of ways. Okay. Let's go back to the slides. Is constant evaluated? This feature is contributed by Jennifer and Stefan from the MSVC team, who work on the compiler and libraries teams respectively. The feature is also both a mix of compiler and standard library features. Is constant evaluated allows developers to know if an expression in their program will be evaluated as constant at compile time. Depending on the result of that evaluation, they can provide different implementations for each. The paper have several has several good examples that explain when the use of the evaluation will be useful. Also, here's a demo showing how it can be used. Is a constant evaluated is a very useful function whenever we want to optimize based on the knowledge whether the compiler is evaluating an expression as a constant or not. So in these examples, we are altering how square works if it is constant similarly so if it's constant we just add a thousand it's a very large number so we can easily recognize it as output similarly we look at cube we also add a very large number here 2000 to the output and then we look at all the cases here we have various cases the squiggles here is is valid it's been the ide is warning us that because square is a const exp constant expression, then we could actually add const exploit to the int. However, we're not adding that to see how the compiler, what the compiler would do. Uh, this is the same case here. Okay. Uh, however, in the case of cube, it didn't give us a similar warning, merely because int cube is not const exploit. We would need to uncomment that to see it for ourselves. Okay. Let's look at all these examples and see the output and compare it to how each function is defined, or how each expression is, uh, is declared. So in the first case, there's no constant cost expert, so we get a small number, which means it actually didn't go through the optimizer. So we print its actual value. In the second and third cases, it actually didn't go through the optimizer because const and const expert mean, meant the compiler is actually evaluated it as a constant uh, expression. So it's constantly evaluated. Uh, it's true. As a final example, because, or it's a final example for square, we passed val a, which is not a constant uh, argument, so it could evaluate this constant. Of course, in these two, the cube examples, it wasn't able to evaluate it as a constant merely because cube is not constant itself. Now, we don't have an example similar to const exp here, like this one, mainly because the compiler would fail to build that uh, because cube is not const exp. Okay. Okay. 
let's go back to the slides now. Const expert for algorithms and utility. This is another feature related to const expert. It's, it's being contributed by Billy from the MSVC libraries team. This feature doesn't add any new functions. Instead, it adds const expert modifiers to functions in algorithm and utility headers. There are a few other C20 accepted proposals that also propose adding const expert to existing functions. However, I guess this one is the largest in terms of the number of const expert modifiers added. By adding const expert algorithms functions, those algorithms can in turn be used in other const expert functions or expressions. Here's a demo showing when that would be useful. So const expert for algorithms. Previously in C17, many of the algorithms and those in these examples here did not have the const expert modifier applied to them. However, with a proposal here, uh, P0202, uh, the const expert modifier has been applied to many, in fact, most of the algorithms uh, and in algorithm header as well as a utility header. So let's look at some of the examples that did not build before. So this is the only one that would have built in uh, 2017. For all the other examples here wouldn't have been built mainly because uh, corresponding algorithms in, in 17 uh, did not have the cost X modifier. Okay. An interesting example, apart from the ones using cost X, is static assert, which uses the same mechanism under the hood. So now, because something like this is sorted, because uh, we added the cost X to uh, a sorted uh, algorithm, now something like this will work. Of course, if you actually change the array, to be something like one, three, four, five, for example, then something like this would not build. Here are a few other examples for functions that has, that could be compiled with const exp, mainly because the uh, code inside it have algorithms that has a const exp modifier applied. Span. Span is one of the most popular library features of C20. Span's implementation has been contributed by MISCO and has been included in VS 2019-16.6. Conceptually, Span is a struct that contains two key members, a pointer to a, to a contiguous sequence of elements and the count of those elements. It's a commonly used pattern or at least span encapsulates a commonly used pattern. So this proposal adds to the standard library through a new type, stood span, and a new header, span. The new type is lightweight and has been designed as a value type, so it should be cheap to construct and use. Also, some of you may have already used the type with the same name from the GSL library. Both GSL span and SUSPAN span provide similar functionalities. In fact, SUSPAN span proposal is based originally on GSL span. And with version 3.0 of GSL span, both types are now more aligned than ever. However, there are a couple of differences. Mainly, GSL span adds bounds checking. Also, GSL span can be used in any C++ version starting with 14, including 17 and 20. While SUSPAN is C20 only, you can read more about GSL span in the blog post shown here. Okay, here's a demo for SUSPAN. For the SPAN demo, we will show how to create a span, uh, modifies the elements inside it, as well as how to iterate over the elements inside the span. Creation is straightforward. You basically pass 
uh, provide uh, type as your argument, uh, template argument, and pass whatever type you that is allowed by span. Vectors, int, uh, arrays, int arrays, all of these types are okay. Mainly because they have a contiguous uh, range of elements that you can uh, that, that can uh, span can make use of. Yeah. So in the second example, modify. We actually try to iterate over all the elements and change the first letter to the uppercase width. So S and V and C are going to all be changed to the uppercase of them. And in the final example here, we show different ways of iterating over the elements as span points to. So This example here is, is the column, or use uh, the, the normal begin, or, or sorry, the, the ones that are commonly used for iterating over uh, containers, begin and end, or even use the old fashioned from int i equals 0 to, or size ti equals 0 to, to the end of the elements. Okay. We have a couple of helper functions to print here print span. So print span will print all the elements inside the span together with a size. So let's take a look see how that works. So first in the create span demo, after creating each of those elements, we print, so print a span, so elements one to four works. And print a span from the vector directly or from <coughs> another span, okay, which both will have the same element, or using the begin and end uh, members of the vector. As a modifier, as you can see, before and after. So before we had uh, the elements inside. Uh, we're not up, uh, do not start with an uppercase, but after we modify the first character for each of them to upper, now they are all uppercase, start with an uppercase. For iteration, the second one is the most interesting because we were able to iterate from end to beginning. That's why we use a reverse begin, R begin, and R end here. R begin to R end. Okay. Now let's go back to the slide. The last feature I'd like to demo today, but certainly not the least, is ranges. I guess it's popular enough, so I won't spend too much time explaining what it does. However, there are a couple of things I'd like to mention about ranges. First, it's a really big feature. Really big. The merged one ranges proposal is 223 pages long, which makes it very takes a very long time to implement and review, of course. Also, Ranges is the first C20 feature that makes use of C20, uh, C20 concepts. MSVC toolset has implemented the compiler and library component of concepts in VS 2019 update 16.3. And since then, Casey Carter has been, who is a contributor for uh, Ranges features, he has been contributing Ranges features to MSVC SCL since then. Here's a look at the progress made so far. The starting point for Ranges implementation has been the completion of concepts. Okay. And since then, a lot has been implemented, including some machinery, including some concepts, a lot, or I think all the concepts have been implemented, and some algorithms as well. Um, not all Ranges features have been done yet, so they won't be easy to demonstrate today. So for my next demo, I'll be showing one of the relatively complete features of ranges, which is ranges algorithms. Here it is. So this is a ranges demo, our final demo for today. And uh, we are going to focus on the ranges algorithm. There are various algorithms that have been implemented for ranges. However, we are going to focus on 
these three only copy, copy, find, and any of. You also have a few helper functions to help to help us with um, demonstrating how the ranges algorithms work. The first one is a copy, a copy from one range to another. We we'll use copy if, very similar to the other, like raise if, the one we have used. In this one, for example, it will only copy numbers that are divisible by three, or in this one, it uses a lambda function to determine if the numbers are positive or actually non, not negative. So anything zero or larger will be copied. Find, we're going to try to find uh, uh, elements as an element, the number 23, and this array of stood pairs using the get second. So this is very powerful. It allows us to combine several things in, into one. So we're going to focus on uh, the second element only. So we're trying to find anything that's, that ends with 23. So there's only one here, for example, so that will return true. Here, we're trying to see if the, one of the first pair have seven, uh, the first element in the pair have 73 or not. Obviously, it doesn't, so this one should return false. The final demo is for the any of algorithms for ranges, ranges any of. And for that example, we are going to uh, make use of uh, two functions, even is even and is, uh, is odd. And we are going to only copy, uh, sorry, uh, we're going to look for values inside our pair where it's either even or odd and one time using the first element in the pair and the second time using the second element in the pair. So let's see a look, take a look at how this works. So the copy demo, the first one was straightforward, it copied everything. Second one, it only copied numbers that are divisible by three. And the third one, it copied only functions, uh, sorry, uh, values that are not negative, 0, 15, and 25. And it obviously, it of course, it copied them in the same order they were created. No surprises in the find and ranges. So everything uh, that ended in 23, which is really only one, was found. However, nothing that started with 73 could be found. Finally, in the NEF demo, the output was based on if it's even or odd. So here range that has even first, yes, on some, yes, no, it didn't have anything, nothing has an even second, everything adds an odd number, 13, 13, and 13. However, there are odd first and, and odd like seven here, and odd seconds, which is really everything. Okay, that has been our last demo for the day. Let's go back to our presentation. We are almost at the end of our presentation. Thank you for staying with me so far. The last thing I'd like to talk to you about today is what we can do together to make the STL a better library. First, I'd like to ask you to try the latest and greatest features of the STL, which you can find at the GitHub repo. Or if you prefer, you can download the latest preview of ES, which will also contain the latest, maybe not the up-to-date exactly with the GitHub, but it will contain the latest merged from GitHub. If you have any questions about STL features or questions, then please report it in GitHub. If you have any other questions about Visual Studio or any other general questions about C++, then uh, that are not STL specific, example about the compiler or other library uh, libraries out there, then the VS developer community is a larger forum and that can be used for asking such questions. Finally, 
I'd like to say big, big thank you very much for the wonderful community contributors to the SCL GitHub repo. By contributing, contributing code and time and asking questions and opening issues, you are making a real difference in the C++ community. Once again, thank you. Here are some useful links. You already know about the GitHub repo. I believe I've mentioned around 12,000 times or so. So you must know it by far. Microsoft STL on GitHub.com. This is a link for the C++ STL, a reference. And finally, the visual, uh, sorry, the virtual CPP repo at GitHub.com uh, under msala msft is where you can find uh, this PowerPoint presentation as well as any of the demo code. Okay, we have reached the end of this presentation. So thank you, everyone. Please enjoy the rest of Virtual CP and please stay safe.